Thank you, Pastor. Shalom, brethren. Let us open in prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, Yahweh, our Elohim, Yahweh the great I am, the King of kings, Yahweh our provider, Yahweh our protector. Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Yeshua, our Messiah. We thank you, Father, for the gift of life. Father, we thank you for your protection and your provision. We thank you, Father, for guiding us throughout the day in the mighty name of Yeshua, Messiah. As I come before you, Abai, I pray that you forgive me for the sins that I've committed <clears throat> through my thoughts, through my actions, even through my words. Abai, I pray that you forgive me in the mighty name of Yeshua, Messiah. Father, forgive me for the things that I've neglected. Your word says, knowing the good that we ought to do and not doing it is still a sin. Forgive me, Abai, in the mighty name of Yeshua Messiah. I thank you for this beautiful day. I thank you, Abba Yahweh, for making it possible for us to meet this hour. But as we come before you, we pray, Father, that you forgive us all the sins that we know and that we don't we we, we did out of ignorance. We pray, Father, that you cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Abba Yahweh, so that Father we may stand in the Holy of Holies, Abba Yahweh, and make our request be known to you. We thank you, Father. We glorify and honor you. We thank you, Father, as we invite you in the service of today, as we are continuing up here with the book of Lamentation. We thank you, Father, for, for the revelations that came out of this book yesterday. We thank you, Abaya, in the mighty name of Yeshua. Let us be careful of our actions. Let us not allow Abaya to go back to the darkness that you have you have you have taken us from that you so that you brought us in your in your in your in the, the likeness that you have brought out and let us remain in this light Abba Yahweh. Let us not look back Abba Yahweh. Father for you are Yahweh Elohim who said Father you are Yahweh who of all impossibilities there is nothing impossible with you. We thank you Father for your for the forgiveness of our sins. We thank you Father for sending Yeshua to come and die for the sins. Father for our sins we thank you and we glorify you in the mighty name of Yeshua, Messiah. We invite you, Abba Yahweh. We pray that you lead us. We pray that, Father, you open our spiritual eyes and our spiritual mind. Let us grasp your weight, Abba Yahweh. Let your weight uh, be a living, living in our heart, Abba Yahweh. Let it correct us. Let it guide us, Abba Yahweh, in the mighty name of Yeshua, our Messiah. We surrender the service to you, and we pray that you will be done in Yeshua's name. So be it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <coughs> Uh, uh, thank you, Pastor. Uh, shalom, everyone. Uh, I'm going to surrender the platform to Sister Casey and Pastor. Hallelujah. Shalom, shalom. Hallelujah. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom, brethren. Um, today, we are going to, to read uh, the book of uh, Lamentations uh, 3 and 4. Um, Sister Casey will be reading for us. Um, uh, uh, Sister Casey, are you ready? Shalom, shalom, everyone. Yes, Pastor. Um, okay, we are going to read from verse 1 to verse 10. Hallelujah. Lamentations chapter 3. I, the man, have seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He led me and made me go in darkness and not light. Surely he turned against me. He turns his hand all the day. He has wasted my flesh and my skin. He has shattered my bones, built against me, and has put around me bitterness and hardship. He has made me live in dark places like the dead of old. He walled around me and I cannot go out. He has made me be my bronze chain. Also, when I cry out and shout for help, he shuts out my prayer. He walled up my ways with cut stone. My paths are crooked. Hallelujah. We can see this is what was happening to the people. 
because as a people, they, they did not listen to Yahweh. And because of that stubbornness, they found themselves in this bitter hardness, hardships. And um, you can see the way they narrate, or the writer is narrating the situation that they found themselves in. This is really a sad, a sad story. But when you look at it, did they not invite this upon themselves? If they had listened to Yahweh, would Yahweh had allowed this thing to happen on, on Israel, on Judah? No, he wouldn't. Yes, when lamenting, at times we, we don't know what we say. We accuse others for our own wickedness. We expect to be forgiven, yet we did the things deliberately. Today, my brothers, we should know that we are living in the dispensation of grace. What does it mean to you and me? It means the forgiveness that we need has already been granted. Now it is up to us to hold on to that forgiveness that Yahweh has given us and not mess around with it. Because if we do mess around with it, if death comes, whilst we are still in the darkness of our hearts, whilst we are still in the dark place, there is no redemption. Or if Yeshua comes, whilst you are still in the dark place, still there is no redemption because the grace would have lived its full time, its usefulness. Just like the law lived its full, its full usefulness, so as grace. And at the time that happens, there will be no turning back. We are told the agony that Israel felt, the cry for help that she cried for, the prayer which was shut out because they had not listen to the times they were given warnings to turn back from their evil ways. That is the same thing with us. The time will come when we are in Hello. that period where the prayers will not be heard because the day would have passed the day of grace. Hallelujah. Sister Akesi, can we go to from 10 to 20? He was a bear lying in wait for me, yeah. a lion in secret places. No. He has deflected my ways and torn me to pieces. He made me desolate. He has trod his bow and set me up as a mark for the arrow. He caused the sons of his quarry to enter my inward parts. I was a mockery to all my people, their song all the day. He has filled me with bitterness and made me drunk with wormwood. And he broke my teeth with gravel. He has covered me in ashes. And you cast off my soul from peace. I have forgotten goodness. And I said, my strength and my hope have perished from Yahweh. Remember my affliction and my roaming as wormwood and bitterness. Hallelujah. My brothers, I was mocked 
to all my people. Their song all day, he had filled me with bitterness and made me drink, uh, drunk with warm wood. And he broke my teeth with gravel. He has covered me in ashes. Can you, can you just try to imagine the situation, the desperation, this person, this Israel was after Yahweh had moved away from him. You cast off my soul from peace. My brothers, Let's just think in our days today when you don't have peace. Just think of the agony that you go through. Just think of the suffering that you go through if you don't have peace. And here, the soul was now without peace. And um, can't even imagine the good things. Because when you are without peace, it is very difficult even to imagine or to remember the good times. I remember my mother used to say, the pup that you eat yesterday cannot keep a baby from crying of anger today. That is exactly the good things that you had. When you are now not having peace, they don't help you much. The happiness that you had two days ago when you are now in, in problems, it doesn't help you. But it is the word of encouragement of today that can help you. Now the word of encouragement of today only comes by the one who is Yahweh Shalom. Now, if you don't have Yahweh Shalom within you, how would you then be able to see goodness? You cannot see goodness in anything. That's why you find a lot of people then, when there is no peace within their souls, they think of ending that life that soul, because it is very hard to even think of anything other than the soul itself, which is in sorrow. My brothers, we are blessed. We are so blessed that we can read about Israel. We can read about Judah. We can read about the lamentation of these people when they move away from Yahweh. Now we have experience, although it is not our own experience, but it is the experience that we have read. For the Bible says the word of Yahweh, it is helpful because it helps us. It rebukes and corrects us. And when we want to do things the same way as the people of old did, we can easily then come and understand the reward they receive due to their rebellion. For those people who say, no, Yahweh is is merciful and he is love. They forget that he is also just and he punishes sin.
Hallelujah. Sister Casey, read from 20 to 29. My soul vividly remembers and bows down on me. I bring back this to my heart. On account of this, I hope, it is by the kindness of Yahweh that we are not consumed, for his mercies are not ended. They are new by mornings. Great is your faithfulness. Yahweh is my portion, says my soul. On account of this, I shall hope to him. Yahweh is good to those waiting on him, to the soul seeking him. It is good that a man hopes for the salvation of Yahweh, even in silence. It is good for a man that he be a yoke in his youth. He sits alone and is silent, for he laid it on him. He puts his mouth in the dust, if perhaps there is hope. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yahweh. Yahweh is is kind. It is by the kindness of Yahweh that we are not consumed for his mercies are not ended. This Yahweh is talking, this part is talking about us, that his mercy is not yet ended. We are in grace, we live in grace. So we need to look again in our souls. We need to turn Yahweh into our portion. We need to seek him. And in our seeking Yahweh, we will get hope. Yahweh is good to those waiting on him, to the souls seeking him. It is good that man hopes for salvation of Yahweh, even in silence. So my brothers, even when things might appear to be difficult for us, let's hope for the salvation of Yahweh. Even when we are in our quiet area, we should hope for the salvation of Yahweh. In everything that we do, let's put our hope in the salvation of Yahweh. My brothers and sisters, this is what we can do today. If there is anyone who has got a question, a contribution, uh, please feel free to, to share. Anyone? Okay, if there is no one, uh, Sister Casey, 30 to 39. He gives his cheek to him who strikes him. He is filled with reproach. For Yahweh will not cast off forever. For though he causes grief, he will have pity according to his many kindnesses. For he does not afflict from his heart, nor does he grieve the sons of men, to crush all the prisoners of earth under his feet, to turn aside the justice of a man before the face of the Most High, to wrong a man in his cause. This Yahweh does not see. Who is this speaking? And it happens when Yahweh does not command it. Both the evil and the good do not go out from the mouth of the Most High. What should mankind complain, living warriors, because of his sins? Hallelujah. Yahweh gives his cheek to him who strikes him. He is filled with reproach. For Yahweh will not cast off forever. For through he causes grief. For though he causes grief, 
you will have pity according to his many kindness. Yahweh is not there to destroy us, but he's there to correct us. Because Yahweh does not afflict from his heart, nor does he grieve the sons of men. So what does it mean? That means we are the ones that does these things to ourselves. Yahweh does not do that. He does not crush all the prisoners of the earth under his feet. He does not turn aside the justice of men before his face. The face of the most high. So, because Yahweh love us and the one good thing is written in verse 38. It is saying both the evil and the good do not go out from the mouth of the Most High. What does it mean? It means both the evil and the good do not go out. So Yahweh only speak good things. So when we are punished, when we are are tested. That's why James says, when we are tested, we are not tested by Yahweh. Yahweh does not test us with evil, but we are tested by our own wicked desires. Because what happens is, when we do funny things, Yahweh's face is turned away from us, and we become game to the evil one. And the evil one then find an opportunity to actually make us suffer for having her turned away from him. He will definitely punish us for moving away from him. When we then turn away from Yahweh, he doesn't receive us with the um, with, uh, parties and say, hey, you come back. No. He will punish us for having left him in the first place. That's why both evil and good do not go out of Yahweh's mouth. Yahweh does not speak evil. But when he speak good, when we do anything contrary to the good word of Yahweh, the evil then manifests when we turn away from Yahweh. Sister Casey, can we go from 40 to 49? Let us search and examine our ways and turn again to Yahweh. Let us lift up our heart and hands to Al in heaven. We have transgressed and rebelled. You, you have not forgiven. You have wrapped yourself with anger and pursued us. You have slain. You have not pitied. You have covered for you with the cloud from any prayer passing through. You have made us sweepings and garbage in the midst of the peoples. All our enemies have opened their mouths against us. Dread and a pity is ours, devastation and ruin. Streams of water go down from my eye for the ruin of the daughter of my people. My eye flows out and does not cease, from there not being any relaxing. Hallelujah. Let us search and examine our ways and turn again to Yahweh. Regardless of what happens, regardless of the grief that we might have, we need to search and examine our ways and turn again to Yahweh. Let us lift up our hearts and hands to El in heaven. What does that mean? It means let's worship Him, let's surrender everything within us to give it to Yahweh. 
we know we have transgressed and rebelled, but Yahweh has not forgotten. But the minute we go to him and submit ourselves and turn back to him, that's why it is written in the book of Isaiah that I am I who blot out your transgressions for my own sake and I shall not remember your sins. Yahweh will always, always forgive us if we genuinely repent, if we genuinely turn again to him. Yes, we might have suffered a lot of things. We might have gone through destruction. But when we turn away from Yahweh, uh, from, from the things that we are doing and cry to Yahweh, Yahweh will always hear us. Hallelujah. Sister Cassie, can we go to, to 50 to 59? Until Yahweh shall look down and see from heaven, my eye deals severely with my soul from all the daughters of my city. My enemies have hunted me like a bird without cause. They have cut off my life in the pit and they threw a stone at me. Waters flowed over my head. I said, I am cut off. <coughs> I called on your name, O Yahweh, from the lowest pit. You have heard my voice. Do not hide your ear at my relief, at my cry for help. You came near in the day I called you. You said, do not fear. O Yahweh, you contended for the causes of my soul. You redeemed my life. You have seen my wrong, O Yahweh. Judge my cause. Hallelujah. This is when one humble himself and acknowledge that which he had done against Yahweh. You cannot expect to be forgiven when you do not acknowledge the evil that you have done. But when we acknowledge, then Yahweh can hear us. Verse 5 says, I called on your name, O Yahweh, from the lowest pit. The lowest pit is when you sink down deep where no one else can be able to pull you out. And then that's when you call and you have heard my voice. Do not hide your ear at my relief, at my cry for help. You come near in the day I called you. You said, do not fear, O Yahweh. You contended for the cause of my soul. You redeemed my life. You have seen my wrong, O Yahweh. Judge my cause. This judgment comes when Yahweh sees the heart that this is, this cry is a cry from the heart not from the mouth. That's why it is written that these people, by their lips, they worship me, but that their hearts are very far from me. So these are the things that actually happen where people only call Yahweh with their lips, but they don't realize that Yahweh does not see the movement of your lips. Rather, he sees, Yahweh sees the condition of our heart. 
So my brothers, we can lie, we can pretend, we can do all things for men to see, but Yahweh is not moved by what we do, is moved by our heart condition. He judges the heart because the heart is the one that sinned. And he said in the book of Ezekiel, he said, behold, all the sins belongs to me. This, all the souls belongs to me. The soul of the father, as well as the soul of the son. The soul that sin, it shall die. So it is the heart of man that is the soul that is the one that sin. It is the heart of man that is the soul that repents. It is the heart of man that is the soul that goes unto salvation. Hallelujah. Brethren, is there anyone who has got anything you would like to, to share? Anyone? Shalom. shalom, shalom. I'm using the PQT again. Um, one of the important things that you mentioned here is, is acknowledgement. Uh, if you do not acknowledge your sin or the wrongs that you have done, how, how do you expect uh, to be taken seriously? It's as good as saying that um, you're not going to forgive the one who, who does you wrong because of your, your hard heart or your, your hard uh, soul that doesn't want to be flexible uh, to a point of, uh, you know, having your self-acknowledgement and knowing that when you are wrong, you are wrong. Um, like in the, in the, the, in just now in, um, in, in the Jeremiah, where the king does, they didn't want to accept that it was wrong. Uh, and yet, Yahweh's hand was well, was willing uh, to to save him, but only if he had decided to make a decision that he he acknowledges his sin. And um, as a as a believer, that's where we need to be. The wrong that I do, say sorry um, to the person whom you have grieved. But most of all, is be able to say sorry and ask Yahweh to forgive you. Shalom. 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 Yes, we need not to be, to be pompous, to be proud, to the point that we cannot ask Yahweh to forgive us. We need to humble ourselves at all times. Hallelujah. Sister Casey, can you read for us um, 60 to 66? Hallelujah. Thank you. You have seen all their vengeance, all their plots against me. You have heard their reproach, O Yahweh, all their plots against me. The lips of those rising up against me and their scheming against me all the day. Look at their sitting and their rising up. I am their song. You will give back a recompense to them, O Yahweh according to the work of their hands. You will give them insolence of heart as you curse to them. Pursue and destroy them in anger from under the heavens of Yahweh. Hallelujah. 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 You will give a recompense, a recompense to them, O Yahweh, according to the work of their hands. What does it mean? It means every person will find judgment according to the fruits that he produces, the work of his hands. You will give them insolence of heart as you cast them. So whatever we do, that will determine the type of heart that we will receive. 
and that will lead us to destruction. Hallelujah. Uh, my brothers and sisters, is there anyone who has got anything that you would like to uh, to comment or to ask as we finish the book three, we are going to the book four. Anyone who has got anything to say? If there's no one, then we can start from verse four, um, Lamentations four, verse one to verse nine. Sister Casey. How the gold dims, the good, old, the good gold is changed. The stones of the sanctuary are poured out at the head of every street. The precious sons of Zion are weighed against pure gold. How they are counted as earthen vessels, the work of a potter's hand. Even the jackals draw out the breast, they suckle their young. But the daughter of my people is cruel, like the ostriches in the wilderness. The tongue of the nursling cleaves to his palate in thirst. The young children are spread, but there is no breaking for them. Those who ate delicacies are desolate in the streets. Those rear on, on scarlet embrace dunghills. And the iniquity of the daughter of my people is heaped more than the sin of Sodom which was overthrown. And the iniquity of the daughters of my people is heaped more than the sins of Sodom, which was overthrown as in a moment, and no hands were willed on her. Her Nazarites were purer than snow, whiter than milk. They were readers of bone than rubies. Their polishing of, of sapphire, their appearance is darker than soot. They are not recognized in the place, in the open place. Their skin is shriveled on their bones. It is dried up. It has become like wool. Better are the ones slain by the sword than the ones slain by famine. Those who follow away, who flow away, pierced because the produce of my field fail. Yes, we are still going on. We know that people were to suffer hunger because of their disobedience. They were to suffer hunger and all the other things that was going on with them. Verse three, it says, even the jackals draw out the breasts they suckle the young, they are young, but the daughter of my people is cruel, like the ostrich in the wilderness. The tongue of the nestling cleaves to his palate in thirst. The young children uh, ask bread, but there is no breaking for them. So when the children are asking for food, they are not given. And what then happens? The iniquity of the daughters of my people is heaped more than the sin of Sodom, which was overthrown as in a moment, and no hand were willed on her. When this happened, there is something that we really need to understand. This, we are told that the Nazareth were poor, purer than so, snow, whiter than milk. They were redder of bones than rubies. Their polishing was of sapphire. 
But what then happened, verse 8, their appearance is darker than soot. They are not recognized in the open places. Their skin has shriveled on their bones. It is dried up. It has become like wood. Their appearance is darker than soot. That means the appearance was black, but it becomes blacker than charcoal, blacker than coal. Why? Because of hunger. There's something I need to ask you, my brethren. If a white person is hungry and is dying of hunger, does he tend to be black? And blacker than black? Or it is only the black that can take, tell, tend to be darker than charcoal? Because it's already black, but with the hunger and everything, he becomes darker than charcoal. He becomes blacker than black. And these are some of the things that tells us what exactly was happening and who exactly was it happening to. Better are the ones slain by the sword than the ones slain by famine, those who flow away pierced because the produce of my field failed. Uh, is there anyone who has got a, a comment, a contribution? Go ahead. Uh, these, bones, uh, these bones that are they talking of, that the throwing of the bones, are they these your 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 sangomas of the day? Uh, which part is that? Uh, uh, the throw the, the throwers of the bones. Where is it written, uh, brother Tolani? Because uh, in fact, I'm listening rather than reading. Um, let's go back up. The appearance is not before that, or oh, which was overthrown in the let's see. Uh, the pressure time such a daughter of the people. Okay, I think I've misheard. Uh, when said uh, what the bones and the rubies and the germs. Oh. oh, okay, okay, okay. No, that's 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 fine. Um, it is. I was actually wondering where, it, because they say they were re redder of bones than rubies. They are polishing. Oh, yes. Okay. I see. Okay. I see. It. I see. It. I see it. Because I'm. I'm not. Re I'm not reading. I'm just listening. So oh. the redder. Yes, so I kind of took it as the reader of bones. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Sam. Oh. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Hallelujah. Is there anyone else, brethren? Uh, if there's no one, then um, I don't know if Sister Casey, uh, you are ready or we can carry on. Okay, uh, I don't think she is ready. Um, I will carry on. The hands of the compassionate woman have boiled their own children. They become food to them in the ruin of the daughter of my people. Yahweh has fulfilled their fury, his fury. He has poured out his fierce anger and has kindled a fire in Zion. And it has 
devoured its foundation. The kings of the earth and all those living in the world would not have believed that the four and the heter would go into the gate of Jerusalem. Because of the sin of a prophet and the iniquities of a priest pouring out the blood of the righteous in her midst, they reeled blind in the open place. They are defiled with blood so that not any are able to touch their garment. They cried out to them, turn away, it is defiled. Turn away, it is defiled. Touch not, indeed they fled and reeled. They said among the nation, they will not continue to live there. The face of Yahweh has divided them out. You will not continue to look on them. They did not lift up the face of the priests. They did not favor the elders. While we are here, our eyes fail for our vain help. In our watch, we have watched for a nation. It does not save. They haunted our steps from going. In our open place, our end came near. Our days were fulfilled. For our end has come. Our pursuers were swifter than the eagle of the heavens. They hotly pursued us on the mountains. They lay in wait for us in the wilderness. My brothers, you can see that in this instant, things were not going on well for Jerusalem, for Israel. Because even their enemies and their haters, they were waiting for them into the gates of Jerusalem. Why? Because the sins of her prophets and the iniquities of her priests pouring out the blood of the righteous in her midst. This, you see, the priests, they were allowing murders of innocent people. They would pervert the laws and they twist it to satisfy their bloodthirsty. And we can see that by so doing, things went very bad for them. The face of Yahweh has divided them out. You will not continue to look on them. They did not lift up the face of the priests. They did not favor the elders. They were not listening to the priests, the real priests. But they were busy with their priests there who were busy murderers and murdering people. Hallelujah. Is there anyone who has got a comment? Anyone with a comment or a question, please feel free. Okay. If there's no one, then we will proceed from verse 20, Lamentation 4, to verse 22. It is written, the breath of our nostrils, the anointed of Yahweh was captured in their pits of whom we said in his shadow, we will live among the nation. Rejoice and be glad, O daughters of Edom, living in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through to you. You shall be drunken and stripped naked. Your perversity 
is complete daughters of daughter of Zion. You will not continue to exile you. You will visit your perversity, daughters of Eden. You will expose your sin. Hallelujah. Here we see that the perversity of the daughters of Zion will come to the end. But then it will start the perversity of the daughters of Eden, Edom, and the doors will be exposed and their sins will be seen. So my brothers and sisters, this is the lamentation from chapter three and four. This shows us the things that will happen to us if we do not hear the word of Yahweh. Because you can see all these things happen because of the perversiveness of those that went through these trials and tribulations because they did not listen. My question to you, my brothers and sisters, are you going to maintain a hard heart that you will hold on to things that will cause you to sin against Yahweh? Or you will throw away your perversion and you go before Yahweh and ask Yahweh to forgive you as you humble yourself and acknowledge your sins. And if you do that, then you have life and life in abundance. In the mighty name of Yahshua, so be it. Brethren, is there anyone who has got a question? Please feel free. Um, let's discuss if there's anything to discuss. Anyone? Yes, it was a marathon. We did 60 and then 20. So we did 88 verses. So on those 88 verses, surely someone has picked up one verse that he might feel that he understood it well. And then let him share with us. Remember, iron sharpens another iron. Hallelujah. Brother Kolani, go ahead. Uh, uh, can you say, <laughs> um, just in listening to, 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 to all these verses, one minute there's remorse, one minute there's blame, but at the end of the day, you come back and you're like, you know what? I can try to be as correct as I want to be. But if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And um, uh, you, knowing now, uh, I mean, the, the, the biggest one for me, well, one of the, the, the verses was that um, uh, rather be die by the sword than the ferment uh, of the land. And if you look at how the continent has, uh, has been, uh, great examples of, of, of Ethiopia and Somalia, of the great famine that has um, attacked, and you've seen now uh, <clears throat> how the world looked at, uh, at the continent. Uh, you look at right now the modern day famine of the great migration where people become uh, the, the slaves onto, or into other lands. And then you come back, you want to still continue to blame, forgetting that, you know what, it is our, we, we were. Uh, part of this whole uh, undoing 
where we were seated properly in the perfect land that Yahweh has given. But because of our stubbornness of our hearts, we decided to go worship for all these gods. We decided to defy Yahweh. We moved away. And here's your consequence. Uh, as you'd normally say, um, if Yahweh orders, uh, when Yahweh orders, he pays. But when you order, you pay. So this Hallelujah. is the whole thing. Shalom. Shalom, shalom. Yes, uh, brothers, we will always pay for our iniquities, for our sins. Thank you, brothers. Um, thank you so much for, for being here with us. And um, I would like... Hello? Um, I'm pretty go ahead. I just want to go back to um, chapter three. You know, there's a lot of people who I've met who have said that, you know, because of what they have done, they cannot see how they can be forgiven because of uh, the sin they've committed. But I like verse 22, which shows us that Yahweh is full of co compassion and that his compassion will never end and that he is full of kindness. And, you know, when the enemy comes into our mind to say, ah, what you have done will never be forgiven, that was too bad. At least there's this word that we can hold on to that can bring us hope. There's also a uh, chapter uh, verse 25 that says Yahweh is good to those waiting for him. You know, sometimes as believers, we find it very hard to wait on Yahweh. I don't know if it's because we feel that he's taking long. But in this chapter, I, I find that, you know, while you are waiting on Yahweh to deliver you in a certain situation, you can actually, you can actually hold on to hope. Not just to wait and you're watching, okay, it's, and now it's now a week now, nothing has happened. You're constantly checking the time. No, we shouldn't be doing that, but we should be rather waiting and also hoping that Yahweh will come through for us. Shalom. Shalom. Yes, it's so true. Yahweh is compassion. He is compassionate and he is kind. Yes, God. His never ending mercy. Um, but we need to turn to him in order for us to enjoy that kindness and mercy upon our lives. If we don't get into his sanctuary, we will not be able to enjoy his shalom, his tender kindness, his mercy, those things are the things that are only enjoyed by those that are always within the boundaries, the confines of his kingdom. Hallelujah. 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 Is there anyone else who would like to share? Something. There's no one. Um, I would ask Sister Ko to close in prayer for us. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Yahweh our Elohim, the great I am, our Redeemer. Father, we come before you this evening. Thank you, Lord, by your way. 
for your kindness, for your compassion, for your mercy, for your love. We thank you, Father, for everything that you do for us. As we come before you, Abba Yahweh, we know that sometimes Abba Yahweh will fall short. And we ask that Abba Yahweh that you remove anything that prevents us, Abba Yahweh, to turn towards you. We ask that, Father, that you remove anything that is not of you, that is in our lives, that we are putting first, Abba Yahweh. Let us continuously seek you, seek your face, Abba Yahweh. For we know that, Father, those who seek you, Father, they shall not be disappointed. Abba Yahweh, I ask that, Father, that you help us, your children, Abba Yahweh, as we are in this world and so many things are happening around us. There's so many wickedness, Father, happening. But I pray that, Father, that let us not lose hope, Abba Yahweh, but let us turn towards you. Let us focus only on you, Abba Yahweh. Father, I pray that if there's anything within us, Father, that we still need to deal with, Father, we pray that, Father, to reveal it so that, Father, we're able to come to you, Father, and repent. Abba Yahweh, you are Yahweh, who is the Elohim of impossibilities. I pray that whatever situation that we as your people face in our lives, Abba Yahweh, let us not forget that you are Yahweh, who speaks the Red Sea. You are Yahweh, who makes a way where there seems to be no way. Father, I also ask that you continuously give us wisdom in your word. For Father, it is your word that can help us identify what we are doing wrong and what we need to correct up again. I pray that your word will continuously be a lamp upon our feet that will direct our every step. I pray that, Father, that you be with our children and that, Father, that you give them a spirit of discernment that anything that they do, Father, they can refer back to your word, Abiyahu, so that they can make the right choices in their life. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for your teaching, Abiyahu. I thank you, Father, for pastor. I pray that, Father, that you continue to be with your, your, your servants. I pray that, Father, that you continue to, to make a way in his life. I pray that you provide for his needs and meet him in every point of his need, Abba Yahweh. I pray that, Father, that you increase his territory, Father, in finance and in health. I pray that, Father, that in everything, Father, may you continuously reveal yourself to him in Yeshua's name. Thank you, Lord. May you bless your children, Father. May we remain within the parameters that you have set around us. May we be true ambassadors, Abba Yahweh, who will go out there, Father, and preach your words to all nations without fear, but with boldness, Father, with courage, Abba Yahweh, with wisdom. I thank you, Father. May your name be blessed. May your name be praised now until forever. In Yeshua's mighty name we pray. So be it. Hallelujah. Sabit, hallelujah. Sabit, hallelujah. 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 Shalom, shalom, brethren. Uh, Sister Emily, is there anything that you'd like to say? No, nothing from my side, Pastor. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. hallelujah. May Pastor. I will be with you all? Shalom, shalom, Pastor. I just want to uh, remind everyone regarding... Uh, um Nissan 14. I just want to say that those who cannot make it uh, to go with us, um, they can still join us on Zoom and partake in the communion. So if you want to partake in the communion, please just uh, join us on Sabbath so we can um, take the communion together. Hallelujah. 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 Shalom, shalom, brethren. I uh, will meet again tomorrow for um, the last uh, chapter of uh, limitation. Hallelujah, Pastor. Uh, for tomorrow, about uh, the last chapter. It's it's a it's a very short chapter. 
if you yeah. don't mind, Pastor, uh, tomorrow can you at least um share the importance of um what do you call it of us going together to to be together in um uh, uh, the supper of Yahweh? Can you at least share it tomorrow to all the brethren why it's so important? And as we are preparing, I see we are more focused about physical preparation and everything, but spiritually, how should we prepare ourselves? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Sister Emily. Hallelujah. So be it.